let's start our discussion about immunology. Immunology is science and study of an organism's immune system. So what is our immunity? Our immunity is our body's protective mechanism against pathogens. Pathogens being disease-inducing uh, organisms or viruses. Why do we need an immune system? We need it essentially for a living because we're constantly attacked by different pathogens, microbes and anything essentially that could potentially harm us. When is our immunity applicable? It's applicable throughout our life from the day we're born until the day we die. And how is the mechanism? This is the discussion that will take the longest time. So let's start with our lines of defenses. We have three lines of defenses, first, second and third. Our first line of defense will be our passive barriers in which we have our skin, our mucous membranes, our stomach acidity, which will inhibit a majority of different pathogens entering our system. Remember that uh, the pH in our stomach is around 2, so it means it's very acidic and it gives a very unfavorable environment for different microbes to survive. Then we have our skin cells that are tightly placed next to each other, inhibiting a lot of bacteria and viruses entering our system. If the pathogens would be able to pass our first line of defense, we have our second line of defense, which will be our innate immune system, in which we will have uh, different cells and proteins that would be non-specific to the different pathogens and try to kill as many of them as possible. The complement uh, response will be essentially our complement pathways, mainly the lectin pathway and the alternative pathway. The phagocytes will include our neutrophils, our macrophages, our, and our natural killer cells. Granulocytes are also the neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Granulocytes refers to that they have secretory vesicles. If the pathogens would be able to pass the second line of defense, we have a third line of defense in which our adaptive immune system will play the majority of the function. In here we have our lymphocytes, which are our B cells and T cells. So where do we get our uh, cells? All of our cells are derived from different stem cells. Stem cells are essentially blank cells, meaning that they are completely undifferentiated. And as they differentiate more, they mature more and become very specific by its function. For when it comes to our blood cells, we have our hematopoietic stem cells, which is found in the red bone marrow in all of our bones in childhood. But when you're an adult, your skull bones, your vertebra, your ribs, your sternum, your scapula, pelvis, and the proximal portions of your humerus and femurs are working while the rest of your bones has converted into fat called yellow marrow. So these stem cells can differentiate into two lineages and uh, this will depend on which chemical messenger they will release. If they would release the cytokine interleukin 7 they would go towards the common lymphoid progenitor in which you will find your lymphocytes and natural killer cells but if they would release interleukin-3, then they would go towards the myeloid progenitor cells. And in the myeloid progenitor cells, we have most of our blood cells. Our erythrocytes, also known as the red blood cells. Our platelets, also known as the thrombocytes. And most of our white blood cells, such as our granulocytes. that are the neutrophils, eosinophil and basophil. And also one of our agranulocytes that is the monocytes, later formed macrophages. Another agranulocyte is our lymphocytes. We have also different lymphoid organs. This will be the site of production of blood cells and also maturation of some um, white blood cells. So first we have our primary lymphoid organs in which that are the bone marrow and the thymus. Bone marrow, as mentioned before, is the production site of all blood cells. Thymus is the maturation site of your T cells. T cell stands for thymus cells or thymocytes. But remember that the thymus uh, will, prior to your puberty, convert into fat behind your sternum and will be called retrosternal fat tissue. 
so, and its role will be taken over by your secondary lymphoid organs. These include your lymph nodes, your muc mucosal associated lymphoid tissues, your spleen, pears patches in your intestine and so on. These uh, have another function of bringing your different antigens. These are the binding sites of the different pathogens to this area and expose them to your uh, lymphocytes for their function for their later function in the adaptive immune system. So what is the biggest differences between your innate system and adaptive? Innate system is also called the non-specific system and therefore it's very unspecific to different pathogens. So it will essentially kill whatever it uh, resembles as foreign. While your adaptive system will be quite specific to the different pathogens that are exposed. Another difference is the diversity. This refers to the range of its action. The innate system uh, has a narrow range of action, meaning that it can only neutralize certain amount of uh, pathogens. But your adaptive system, due to its somatic recombination, it has a wide range of actions and wide range of pathogens to neutralize. But one of the biggest differences between the innate and adaptive system is its memory. The innate, as it's non-specific and narrow-ranged, it does not have a memory. So it does not remember whatever it has been exposed to before. But your adaptive system will remember what it has been exposed to before and be more prepared next for the second exposure. Both of these systems, the adaptive and immune, can become pathological and start to attack your own body cells. And uh, when it comes to the physical and chemical barriers, these refers essentially to our lines of defenses. The blood proteins uh, in the innate system is the complement, but it's not all of the complement pathways. Only the alternative and the lectin pathway are involved in the innate system. But the classical pathway of the complement system requires an antibody, and therefore it's associated with the adaptive immune system. When they write, um, what you see here written about antibodies, they refer to the humor response, which we'll talk about later on. And we mentioned the cells associated with the different immune systems. Remember, all of these uh, cells will be spoken about individually in uh, upcoming videos. Thank you.